Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. I believe this message is going to bless you. I believe this message is going to uplift you. I believe this message is going to rearrange some things in your life and that God is about to bring you out of something. Amen. So I am excited this morning and, and, and I just want to get right into it. But before we do, okay, share this with somebody. Let somebody join in. Let somebody watch this because I believe this is going to bless them. Amen. And, uh, but let us pray real quick. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful, beautiful morning, Lord God. We thank you for this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We thank you for giving us another breath of life, Lord God, that we know that just because we're here, you're not done with us yet, Lord God. We thank you for that, Lord God. And, and, and just open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our souls, Lord God, to receive your message today, Lord God. That it may reach us, rearrange us, and change us, Lord God, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So today's message is called, Struck Down But Not Destroyed. Struck Down But Not Destroyed. Now, we are going to go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and this is what it says. I want to get right into it because I, I, I'm excited this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it says this. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Now, I'm going to break this down for you. Amen. Now, so let's go right to verse 7. It says, but we have this treasures in jars of clay. So what does that mean? It's talking about how we have these treasures inside of us. How God puts valuable things inside of us. Amen. What, like, like what are you talking about? I'm talking about his spirit. His word. His power. Amen. He puts all these things inside of us. For when the right time they can come out. Amen. So it says jars of clays. Now, a jar of clay might not look like nothing. So listen, we might not look like much on the outside. Oh, but you don't know what God's been putting on the inside. Amen. And what he's putting on the inside is about to come out. Tell yourself it's about to come out. Thank you, Jesus. So see, people might judge you from the outer appearance. People might look at you from the outer appearance. I, I, I look like this five foot six short little uh, Mexican American little man. And, and I might not look like much, but inside I am a giant. I have the spirit of the living God inside of me. I have his word. I have his power. I have his Holy Spirit. So don't judge me by the jar of clay on the outside, amen, because you don't know what's on the inside. Thank you, Jesus. So verse 7 is reminding you of things of, 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 of what you have inside. Now, it's getting you prepared for verse 8. See? Because verse 8 reminds us of the harsh reality that we have to face in life. It reminds us of the hard times. Watch this. So verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed. Hard press on every side. See, hard press means that you're getting hit from every single direction. You're getting hit from the front, 
from the back, from the left, from the right, and you are hard pressed. That means you're being attacked from every single direction in your life. So see, you have to remember verse 7, because when you're going through verse 8 in your life, you have to remember what God said in verse 7. Watch, watch this. So it says, you are hard pressed, right? But he's telling you, you will not be crushed. Amen. You will not, it will not overtake you. See, life and trials and tribulations might hit you from all angles of life. But it's not going to overtake you. It's not the end. And then it says, hard pressed. It says perplex. See, perplex, what does that mean? That means confusion. That means you're puzzled, you're confused. Those are the moments that you say in your life, why is this happening in my life right now? Why is this happening to me right now? Why, God? It says perplex. But what does it say? It says perplex, but not in despair. See, to be in despair means to have lost all hope. So it says, you're perplexed, you're hard pressed, but you are not without hope. There is still hope in your situation. There is still hope in your life. There is still hope for you. Don't lose hope. Amen. And God is saying, you still have hope. He is not done with you yet. He is not finished with you yet. It's not over. Verse 9, watch this. Persecuted, but not abandoned. God has not left you. Yes, it's hard. Yes, you're being persecuted. Yes, it's difficult. But God promised you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Struck down. Then it says this. Struck down, but not destroyed. Amen. You might be a little beat up. You might feel a little beat up. You might be down right now. But you are not destroyed. You might be struck down. You might be on the floor right now with all kinds of bruises and beat up and life and life has got you all the way down. But guess what? The enemy cannot destroy you. Life cannot destroy you. And then it says this. It says this in verse 10. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Because we have accepted the death of Jesus Christ, because we have accepted Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us, we now have the resurrection of the living God to rise within us. Jesus didn't stay down. He rose up. He's saying, don't stay down because my spirit is going to help you rise up. Thank you, Jesus. So we share and that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our bodies. I don't know what you're going through right now, but let the life of the living God rise within you. Whatever the situation, whatever the doctor told you, whatever, the, uh, 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 whatever has struck you down, listen, you're not being destroyed. Let the life of the living God rise within you. 
So you, you say to yourself, I might look a little beat up. This jar of clay might not look like much, but there's things coming out, amen? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, some of you guys been getting beat up time and time and time and time and time again. And you feel like you can never get out of it. It feels like you can never really get out of the situation when one thing hits you another thing hits you and another thing hits you and it feels like that's all there is for you now let me address that to you let me address that let's go to Psalms 23 this is why I'm about to tell you why Psalms 23 verse 4 it says this Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. See, some of you guys have been getting beat up time and time and time after time. And here's the problem. The problem is in Psalms 23 verse 4. Because right here it says, yea, though I walk through the valley. And the problem is that some of you guys were walking through the valley. And instead of walking through the valley, you have set up and built you a home in the valley. You have stayed in the valley. You have gotten comfortable in the valley. You have raised your kids in the valley. You have set up shop in the valley instead of going through the valley. You stayed and got comfortable with your situations around you. Time after time of getting beat up and all these situations, you said, I guess this is all I know. I guess this is how it is. I guess this is how it's supposed to be. But no, you were supposed to walk through the valley. You were supposed to set up shop and house in the valley. You got too comfortable. Your mentality said, this is all I know. This is, I guess this is, this is what, it, what it is. No, it's not what it is. It was supposed to be just for a season and a time in your life that you go through it. This is why we have generational curses. Because you guys have, because some of you guys have set up a house and built you a home in the valley when you were supposed to go through the valley. See, and, and you have people around us that don't want us out of the valley because they have made a living around us based on us being in the valley. Have you ever seen those commercials that are, uh, uh, if you have this, or if you have this symptom, or if you have this symptom, or pretty much every single symptom in your life, you need this medicine. They have made a lifestyle from you staying in your valley. Thank you, Jesus. See, some of the people around you don't want you out of the valley. But God is saying, you can't stay in the valley. You need to get out of the valley. He didn't make you to stay in the valley. He made you to walk through the valley. And in that, he said he would protect you. Some of your kids, or, or you might be one of those kids that were raised in the valley. You need to break that generational curse right now and get out of the valley. You need to get that mentality and say, I am getting out of this rut. Enough is enough. I am about to change my life. 
I will not live with drug addiction anymore. I will not live with all this pain and suffering anymore. I will not live in the valley. The valley wasn't made for you. And you say, oh, Pastor David, I don't know. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how people hurt me. You don't know the pain and suffering that they have afflicted on me. You don't know what I've been through. Well, I say to you, get out of that victim mentality and get yourself into the victor mentality. See, you are not a victim. If you have the spirit of the living God, you are not a victim anymore. You are victorious. Because the spirit is within you. Watch this. Genesis 50, it says this. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. It says this. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives and that is Joseph that is Joseph saying that to his brothers see his brothers betrayed him his brothers sold him into slavery he was in prison for something he didn't do he was wrongfully accused of something and was imprisoned for many years. See, Joseph suffered time and time again when he didn't even do anything. He went through a lot of pain and suffering, but at the end, God made him victorious. God made him ruler of all. And it says that that they intended it to harm him, but God turned it around for his glory. He turned it around for good, for the saving of many lives. See, something that you're going through might just save lives later. He even saved his own family from starving to death. Hey, Amen. He went through a lot of things, but at the end, God made him victorious and ruler over everything, over all the land. And he saved many lives. See, Jesus, before he went to the cross, when they were beating him up, when they were hurting him, he didn't complain. He knew the bigger purpose. He was going through the valley but at the end, he was victorious for the saving of many lives. Don't stay in the valley. Jesus rose. See, they struck Jesus down, but God elevated him up. See, life I, I, might have got you struck down right now, but God is about to elevate you up. Don't stay down. Get up. That's what God is saying. Remember that. When you get struck down, it's only an opportunity for God to elevate you up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I believe this is a timely message. And I believe this message is straight for you. Now, if you were raised in the valley or you've, you've been sitting in the valley for way too long, if you've been struck down, this is the time. God wants to elevate you up. God wants to bring you up. Not only for you, for generations, for your family, for your loved ones, amen? So let us pray. Dear God, 
We just want to thank you for this message, Lord God. We want to thank you that you're rising some people up, that you're rising your spirit within them, that what you put inside today will rise up out of them, Lord God, that the living God is about to do something in their lives. Break bondages, break generational curses right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is somebody that God is healing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Do it right now, Lord God. We thank you for that. We praise you for that right now, Lord God. Somebody is watching right now that is hurting and suffering, and God is about to bring you up. Somebody is listening right now that has some kind of illness or something that God is about to produce a miracle in you. Start praising, stop worshiping, start worshiping right now. Just worshiping and thank him for what he's about to do. We thank you in your precious name. I hope this blessed you. Please share it. Thank you. See you again next Sunday. God bless. Thank you.